Want to do better? Then it's time to change the story. Welcome to our show about new visions currently transforming the world through the confluence of art, tech, and innovation. And now your hosts, Michael Ashley and Neil Sahota. Hey, everybody. We want to introduce you to Jennifer Friend from the Project Hope Alliance. We are partnering with her, Neil and I, with Changing the Story. And we're very, very proud to be part of this, this project right now, now more than ever. We need your help. We need to help our children. And so we very much are excited to bring you Jennifer and the Project Hope Alliance and see that we can do great good in the world. Thank you. We're so grateful for this partnership. You know, in Orange County alone, there's over 28,000 children in our public education system experiencing homelessness. But we know that if we invest in our kids today, they won't be homeless tomorrow. Um, We've really seen that there is a $264 ROI for every $100 invested at Project Hope for our programming that we're doing with our homeless children and youth. Well, thank, thank you for all the hard work, Jennifer. And we're running a special, uh, I guess we'll call it a contest. We're going to try and raise money for Project Hope Alliance. Uh, there's a special page on our website. Check out the note below. And please participate and please donate of yourself. Time as well as your money is always appreciated. They're always looking for skills and any kind of help they can get. And it's a really worthy cause. So thank you for your help. Thank, thank you. you. Hey, welcome to another episode of Changing the Story. Our guest is Tufi Saliba, one of the most amazing people I've <laughs> ever met. He's the CEO of Toda. He's a, well, to be honest, a genius. He knows machine learning, decentralized governance, blockchain, distributed computing, cryptography. I think actually you may have invented half this stuff, <laughs> Tufi, with all the IP you've, you've created. I believe some has ended up with Google, HP, and Intel. He currently also is the chairperson for IEEE's board on AI standards. And he was also the foundation chair of the ACM Practitioner Board Conference Committee. Tufi, I don't know how you do all these things, um, but thank you for all of it and welcome to the show. Thanks, Neil. Thanks for having me and thanks, Michael. Absolutely. So as a visionary, Tufi, what is the story that you want to bring to the world? Uh, so for, for the last uh, 20 years, uh, my uh, biggest worry was uh, more so are we heading towards uh, um, global prosperity or not? Truly, are we heading towards that? And, uh, and I feel uh, uh, more than ever that we are going in that direction. Uh, lately, my worry is more about the security of uh, AI that is being built. Uh, does it have the security by design? And what we mean by design, not like the, the artistic design. It's by, you know, its own structure. Uh, and what we mean by that is that uh, can it be attacked by the person who's running it? Mm. Um, so uh, I worry a lot about that, and and I feel that anyone who knows uh, or who gets to learn about the aspects that I am worrying about uh, end up worrying as well. So uh, that's what keeps me up at night, and that's what I hope to bring to humanity, to every single person, the ability to utilize AI, all the greatness that it has, without being controlled by a third party that might be the attack vector. And that, uh, that uh, party, again, can be the company or the government that is giving them that AI. So it's not, oh, we're secured behind the firewall. That's not the type of security that I'm worried about. Right. Well, so how do we get there? How do we, and clearly with all your background, your expertise, how do we begin to do that? How do we make a better world and, and a safer world? So there's something that is called autonomous decentralized governance. Uh, uh, it's been um, tested for quite some time. It works uh, phenomenally well. Um, I shouldn't say phenomenally well. It works. It could work a, a lot better. Um, and, uh, you know, I feel that uh, uh, I, I talk uh, metaphorically a while back about a pill, which would be your future phone. I mean, 
anyone who's listening has got a device. That device, uh, debatably, has got more intelligence than you in some aspect and uh, in all aspects at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether you admit to it or not, it is going to have more intelligence than you in pretty much all aspects. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, now, uh, imagine that that device can be controlled by a third party. Whether that third party is Facebook or Tencent or Chinese government or U.S. government, whatever, there's so many of those third parties. Mm -hmm. Choose one that you are comfortable with. Choose one that you're comfortable with and continue carrying that device. Except that the future of that device is likely going to be embedded in you. It's going to be like the pill you take every Friday. Whether you like it or not, that reality is coming. Do you give that pill to your children or any next generation? And leave a mark on this planet and say, like, I left the world better than what I came to receive it. With full conscience, do you really think that that is what's happening? And we know the answer to that. It should be something that is done better. There should be a pill that no one can control but your child. No one can control but that next generation. It cannot be repurposed. How can we get there? You know, we start working on a lot of uh, uh, methods uh, that we believe uh, they can get us there. Um, we know some of them that they do work. Uh, the rest of the world, they don't necessarily know that they do a work. Like uh, I'm the author of Toda IP uh, protocol. It's, uh, it's a protocol free for anyone to use if they learn how to, to use it. So that's uh, one aspect. Now, <clears throat> just to be clear, uh, when a lot of folks, they talk about just altruism alone, I feel that altruism alone uh, doesn't uh, cut it. Like you need to have to address the fear, need, greed, along with altruism and love. So I feel that those are the five elements that get people to wake up every day at 6 a.m. in the morning to help you out with your mission. So we certainly have those elements. And I feel having those elements in every single aspect, like we have a company doing anti-fake information, building it on uh, Toda IP, how you're able to combat AI using cryptography as opposed to using you know AI to combat AI. Um, there's a lot of those, and some of them, there are initiatives that they're like with the IEEE, my, my mission there, uh, January, towards the end of January is when we actually announced it, that I've uh, picked on the global chair for AI standards. And with that, I'm building the AI standards in South Korea, the, the main headquarters would be, but it can have, you know, centers across the globe. <laughs> and its intent is not political. It's intent to ensure that AI, that it's going to be built by software developers, by AI scientists, is not just secure from it's behind the firewall. It's actually, it's secure that it cannot be repurposed or used against the people by someone else. The biggest danger in AI is not AI taking over and coming and fighting people. The biggest danger in AI is being used by someone else maliciously against that person. So we're trying to prevent that from happening. Well, that that's a big problem, and I think the average person doesn't actually understand some of these things, right? I mean, they know that hey, the technology works; it's probably too complicated, or people or companies or government agencies are saying some of these things. We have to protect people from themselves, but you know, we, we know that if we empower people to a degree, they they can take responsibility and they can do like decentralized governance. How how do we get people ready for that? How do we kind of cross this barrier and take away that argument from people or organizations, I should say? Well, uh, we go back to the uh, economy always wins at the end. So if I were to give you a model that it's so good to people, but it's going to make you lose money, you're not going to do it. Even if you tell me you're going to do it, tomorrow you're going to get a job by IBM or Tencent and you're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. So... So the model we put together is something that they don't understand yet, like, you know, the Facebook of the world or whatnot. And it's not our job to make them understand. It's our job to make sure that developers and people that they're making that movement understand to truly bring it to the end uh, user. So effectively, if we were to go back to that example, that smartphone that is built for the user and not for a certain entity that can control it. Mm -hmm. Let's imagine 2030, and even not that far, it's 2024, and you have the ability to take that pill or that bracelet that's going to track you or whatnot. Um, In the name of your safety, they're going to invade 
your privacy, but then the control over you, the, a lot of the things that you do and so on and so forth, as opposed to one that can give you all the safety without giving that control away from you. Which one would you choose? Obviously the latter. And therefore, that's the one that has a market. And therefore, that's the one that's going to be profitable. And that's the one that every single investor in the world is going to be investing in and not the former. So if you think from that perspective, even like a shareholder of Facebook who is going to look at them and be like, I'm not going to, I can't swear, right? But you know what I mean? You'd be like, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> I, I'm trying not to let the F word come out. Whatnot, but it's usually <laughs> Thank you. Like, yeah. We appreciate yeah. that. But so I think what you're saying is you're talking about changing the incentives. You're making the economic incentives benefit what is best for humanity as opposed to what it sounds like tyranny. Am I correct? Well, yeah, and then historically speaking, the winners of the internet were those that they're uh, in the smartphone and whatnot. They're those that they focus on the users. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the um, internet became life, and users are the Homo sapien. And if you don't focus on giving them what's best for them, mm -hmm. and focus on like some other agenda or whatnot, uh, you're not going to win. And sometimes you don't know what's good for them. You think it's like by incorporating certain rules and regulations and corporate governance, they're like, oh, we will not do that. But mm -hmm. you have to trust that we will not do that. I mean, we saw what happened with on tiny little privacy thing that people trusted Facebook. They will not invade your privacy, but they did. Mm -hmm. So effectively, if they can, they will. The difference, what we're building here, they will not be able to, and therefore they won't. So that gives you a lot of power. Even when you're running your own company, imagine you're able to look any regulator in the eye or any government and say like, uh, you're asking me to build a back door to this. I want to comply, but I can't. Because we're using this technology the way we've built it to the users. It's a 100% controlled by the user. You need to go and knock on each and every person and say like, give me access to this specific data. Mm -hmm. Now the user will have the cryptographic proof for every single thing. Imagine a bracelet that you're able to prove that you didn't come in contact with anybody with a certain disease. You're able to prove. Not every single douchebag sitting in some database somewhere they're able to prove that along with a lot of other things and they can repurpose it for a lot of other things. Yeah. So are you saying that, I mean, because you mentioned the pill, you mentioned the bracelet. Are you saying that this is coming? Is this what you think? 100%. If anybody thinks that the, the smartphone is going to look like this in 10 years, they'll be delusional. The smartphone is going to be in 10 years embedded in you, one way, whether you like it or not. We're not building this. So people, they saw me spot, speaking about this a couple of years ago. They're like, oh, you're building the demon. We don't want to take your pill. No, no, no. Wait, wait a second. They're building it. That's happening. Your children are going to take that pill. You may not, you may, but you, they are going to take it. This is happening. What we're doing here is giving the additional optionality where you can take a pill that your child can control and not a third party. Wow. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a sea change. Uh, <laughs> how, okay, so can you give us some specifics? How do we get there? How do we get to the world that you're talking about? So, you know, let's, uh, I can give you something that is factual right now, because a lot of people, they're like, oh, you know, it's talking far off in the future. We don't really understand. I'm going to give you factual things right now. AI is being used against, you know, a lot of people with so many different ways. One of them is called deep fake. Mm -hmm. Very simple example. Using AI to combat deep fake, there are about uh, 50 plus companies doing that. And we're likely to partner with each and every one of them because uh, they're doing great stuff. But we all know it's corrective because that defect is already out. And then you need to run that processing to maybe determine if it is defect or not. Um, and let's say you do with certain accuracy. Tomorrow, you're not going to be able to. And any AI scientist will be able to tell you that. Tomorrow, the AI that is being used to build that you know, uh, defect evolved. Then you need to evolve your system accordingly. So... So it can give you a certain percentage from corrective, which is great. Instead, using cryptography, it was built in 48 hours in one of the hackathons in the cemetery that you had about a year ago. And, um, and it's basically, it takes every single frame 
And it's say, if I'm Donald Trump, I use that software, say it's called, say, Antific or whatnot. Every single frame gets cryptographically hashed and it gets injected in the network, that the IP network. It's basically, you can have billions of videos being done per minute, if you really want, or trillions. And they all end up using something that's called this uh, deterministic distributed algorithm or deterministic distributed computing, where they do temporal coupling, the hash versus another hash, concat, and then they create another and so on and so forth. Effectively, every minute, there's a single cryptographic hash, basically, it's just 32 characters. That's the only truth that gets in, in, injected every, you know, on every single device. Now, here's what happens. If six months from now, you're somebody in Thailand or in China or in Korea, wherever you are, and you're watching that video, your device just has that 32 characters from when it was inserted. It basically compares while it's loading into your memory for you to view that video, the added element for your machine to run that exact same hash is tiny little computation. It's actually 0.0001% of the computation is happening. It runs that, it compares it, and it sees that it's like 100% certainty that this is the video that was signed cryptographically by Donald Trump. What I'm looking at is Donald Trump. Without even clicking on anything, you see the green thing. It says like, mm. this is it. This is, so now you're looking at something that it's called the, um, uh, we, we don't want to say the, the, the truth because sometimes whoever video that you're watching may be truth, maybe not, but at least authentic. Mm -hmm. This is authentic information. Same applies for any information, any news, any whatnot. So imagine you have the authentic internet. Mm -hmm. What? It's 2020. <laughs> we don't have the authentic internet yet. Right. We don't. That's a problem that exists today. Anyone pick 10 random presidents of nations in the world today and tell them, give me the news in the last 24 hours. You get 10 different versions. Mm -hmm. If the yeah. president of nations they have no access to authentic information you think the people do that's a big big problem mm -hmm. as a humanity if you don't have access to authentic information instantaneously without spending money on it without spending time we're going to be going evolving regressively i don't want us to evolve regressively i want us to continue to evolve progressively so that's okay. just one aspect. One, I can give you, you can talk. I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, look, Tubi, I, I totally agree with you, right? And the mis misinformation is killing us. I mean, look at all the misinformation going on with COVID-19 and everyone's trying, trying to crack down to prevent that. It, it's a killer, right? It's actually taken away from our ability to focus our efforts on more important things. Right, right. The narrative is what's uh, bigger than the virus itself. And then... You've got the chemicals that's injected into people's brains, which is the fear, which is also bigger than the virus itself. And it's like, the, if you look at the, that narrative, I mean, like, um, as a random citizen, I mean, you just want to look at it and be like, what are they telling me? But why are they comparing one nation to another? This is not a football game. One nation has different type of population, different climate, different, a lot of susceptibilities. That's from one perspective. But then what they're using, what, the, what, what sample of people they use to test the data, to test them in the first place for COVID-19, that impacts tremendously like the actual results. All of those uh, things, they're impacting the authenticity that the user at the end of the day saying is like, oh, can I compare A to B? No, 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 they, they're not, they're not, the, you can't compare apples to oranges. Let's make sure that uh, we give people authenticity. Mm -hmm. I think that that's going to be critical. So you shared a little bit with us what's going on today, right? Let's say we can beat the deep fakes, the fake news. What else do you think will happen? I mean, let's imagine it's 2030 right now. What do you see the world like? Well, 2030, here's the thing. Um, I, uh, I've said it for... Uh, for years and people, they think it's like, oh, I'm just instilling fear for whatever reason. Uh, if we don't do anything about it, uh, now Elon Musk says it as well. It's like, this is more dangerous than nuclear warheads, mm -hmm. yet nobody's really securing it properly. So when I said it, people kind of listen a little bit when, you know, Elon Musk are saying it, they're like, oh, that's just like Elon Musk, whatever. Um, look, I mean, five years ago, Bill Gates talked about 
pandemics and people they're like, ah, oh, it's just Bill Gates, whatever. Okay. And then now people, they blame him for that. I mean, look, um, it, it, when we're trying to, to predict certain elements in the future, we're not causing it. We're predicting certain elements to prevent it from happening. Okay. Um, I, I, um, I, I must say that, like, um, I have a Canadian son who loves Donald Trump more than any American, probably. <laughs> just saying. And he loves Bill Gates as well. And he tells me, like, Papa, like, why is it that some people, they have to, like, love this guy versus that guy? They, they, these are two phenomenal people in his mind that they're both driving towards a better world. So, so there's... Uh, you know, there, there's something that uh, I, I feel that we need to realize that sometimes people, when they're predicting certain elements in the future, they're not causing it. I'm not really causing this thing. So 2030 can be horrific if the only option that people have is a pill that someone else can control. Horrific. They will make it look extremely pleasing that, for example, in... Um, a city of Los Angeles, for example. Are, are Michael, are you in Los Angeles as well? Uh, no, I'm in Orange County with Neil. Oh, okay. So Orange County. Or, and, right there. Um, or less, Los Angeles, whatever. So let's say uh, you're running a certain um, a, a telco thing, and then it can be controlled by a certain central entity. Mm-hmm. But that pill that people are taking, and then the mayor of Los Angeles gives you a call and says, Michael, you're the CTO of that company, or the suicide rate went up. Can't you do mm-hmm. something about it? And you're like, maybe. Then you go and ask a bunch of researchers. And then they came, they come back and tell you, like, well, Michael, if we do those kind of changes in the actual pill that take, uh, people take, that software that they're mm-hmm. taking, mm-hmm. they will no longer be able to kill themselves. You don't only reduce the suicide rate, you eliminate it completely. Mm. It it looks phenomenal. Whoa, you're gonna become a hero. You reduce all of the deaths. Right. And the mayor is gonna look like a hero. So they can make it look extremely attractive. But here's the thing: imagine you live in a world where you cannot kill yourself. I mean, that's coming, brother. 2030 is coming. And when that moment comes. People remember, like, oh, my God, I remember this guy with the big hair was talking about this kind of stuff. <laughs> I wonder what happened. Did, did, did he succeed in having that pill that we can take it? It still be competitive in the workplace, yet we can circle ourselves if we really want to. Not, I'm not saying people, they should kill themselves. Like, I've lost a lot of people for, to suicide. Fucking hate it. Sorry for the language. But I hate it. I hate it. We all do. But you can't tell the world you're going to live in a world without that option. So I'm just giving you some a slither from a humanistic perspective that even debatedly, some people, they say, oh, yeah, but it's so good. Like, even people, they're listening to your show, they're going to be like, yeah, no, no, we need to apply it. We need to have that ability to stop that, uh, that suicide. You know, so, so, so that's today. Okay, what other things? What other things could happen in 2030? What other things? Like, um, Michael, in your city, people, they like stay up until like three or four in the morning. They're doing a lot of drugs. Could you do something about it? Press a button. They go out to sleep at midnight. Is that possible? I'm not talking about sci-fi here. This is reality being implemented as we speak, you know? Well, I think what you're also talking about is, you know, it's often said the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Clearly, these are good intentions, or for the most part, they would seem to be. And yet there are horrible externalities that you're bringing up. Right. And, and, and there, there are uh, possibilities that until this moment, actually, I hadn't considered. So thank you. Um, but, okay, so now that we've presented some of the, the worst possible scenarios, how do we get That's to... That's not the worst, by the way. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> well, I, I'll accept that there's probably much worse. So how do we get to a world that's not Black Mirror, right? How do we get to that unblack Mirror world? And it sounds like um, distribution, getting away from centralized. How, it, it, how do we get there? Autonomous, decentralized governance, brother. That's the thing. Like, uh, um, imagine you take that uh, pill. It gives you all the ability to be connected to the internet, be able to do a lot of things, but you control it. No one can repurpose it. If that mayor ever calls you in Los Angeles Mm -hmm. and says, like, Michael, do something about it, you're going to say to that mayor, I'd love to help you, but you need to knock on each and every person's Mm -hmm. head and tell them, 
can you let me stop you from committing suicide yourself? And they say, yes, I'll let you do that today or no. Mm -hmm. And if they let you do that, look, I mean, people are free to do whatever um, they want. Um, the, the, now, when it comes to talking so much about liberty, and I said I'm not affiliated with any political agenda, a lot of folks uh, would think that's like, okay, well, there's some nations that they don't necessarily subscribe to that liberty thing. So how come you're not political? It sounds like you are political. Uh, Neil witnessed me speaking in uh, in the middle of China after for a period of time where I was actually banned out of China. And then I'm back into China and I'm friends with all people on planet Earth because I hope people don't judge me from reading just a chapter of my book. Because if you read one chapter, you might think that the villain is the hero and the hero is a villain. You kind of need to read the rest of the story. So when we t talk about liberty here, from evolutionary perspective, and when we're talking about even evolutionary, like computer science evolutionary, if you're building a system that we, we already know that that system is hybrid, that system is between AI and human intelligence, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you want some function to those homo sapiens or do you just want them like monkeys in a zoo? If you are really smart, you really want to give them a function. If they don't have the liberty, their function is null. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's nullified. So here comes the actual liber liberty aspect is extremely essential to the continue with, uh, you know, evolutionary steps. And then when folks... They extremely know their stuff in, you know, in China and other places in the world. They they spoke to their superior or whatnot. They're like, we need to let back that crazy guy. Tell us about those kind of things because he's really meaning for the next, for the for the next evolution of humanity. Because frankly, uh, we it doesn't matter what's our political belief, our religious belief or whatnot. We do know historically uh, the species that governed this planet in the past. We know what it looks like today. The predecessors of that species is the chicken. The dinosaurs, they've ruled this planet for 70 million years and more. I mean, if you count all of them. Mm -hmm. We've only been here 200,000 years. Mm -hmm. Let's not turn Homo sapiens into chicken. Let's not turn this earth into a chicken farm. We can do a lot better. So in the name of all humanity, let, let, let's do it right. It's a very tiny little mistake that we end up doing. And then because we think we need to be in control of it, let me assure you, whoever is thinking that they are going to be in control of it, whoever that person is or that group, they are not the one that's going to be in control. It's going to be people like me. We will be in control of it if we're really malicious. But I'm not. I'm trying to tell you that we could have that control. We don't want that control. We want the control to be in the individual because being in the individual, they're able to have that liberty. They're having a function that can be extremely necessary for the con continuum of that uh, humanity. And this is one of the things I love about you, Tufi. You're very passionate about your principles. And I think you're also spot on. Don't judge a person by one chapter. You got to read the whole book, the whole story, the whole journey. And mm -hmm. given that, you know, if people want to learn more about you, your work, what's the best way for them to get connected with you? Uh, well, currently with my servicing with the IEEE, you can just put IEEE to Fisa Liva and then you'll find that uh, uh, page. And uh, there will be a lot of uh, chairs from across the globe that I'm hoping, and I'm trying to lure them in uh, to, to join uh, when you're getting top names from a lot of uh, cities to represent that city. You, you kind of need to work hard on them and make sure that they like it. And uh, uh, that's one way. Another way is that uh, go to uh, LinkedIn and add me and say, like, you've seen your video or whatnot. And I'm very responsive. Um, Twitter as well. I started using Twitter a couple months ago. And that's another thing that, uh, for, that is happening right now that not a lot of people are aware of. Um, uh, so you know what's happening in Facebook and they got that $5 billion fine. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So expect something similar to happen to Twitter very soon and uh, YouTube big mm -hmm. time. Uh, so there's something that it's called the censoring that everybody now knows about. They just like shut down your video. That's the old kind of censoring. I've built an algorithm 14 years ago and never thought that somebody would use something like that for bad. 
But it's basically the algorithm, the way it works, it deranks you and it slows you down. So instead of like actually shutting down the video, they use those algorithms where it's like it's, it slows it down. For example, when it loads, it doesn't show it. It doesn't appear as recommendations and so on and so forth. So, so <clears throat> they silence you by noise, basically, <clears throat> and they think they're rightful because they think certain video is telling you know fake news or whatnot. That's not the approach to do things, guys. There are so many better ways because you end up like nullifying a lot of the greatness. So, uh, so I started using Twitter recently and what I did with that, uh, because Neil, as you know, I used to sleep in 11 cities every month. I'm like uh, traveling all the time. And with this COVID-19, it's just like I go from one kid's house to another kid's house. Like I'm one of those people several times, but I make it believe. But anyway, so <clears throat> effectively, um, what I ended, ended up doing using Twitter a little bit more, but I ended up like uh, uh, creating several different uh, identities that use VPNs and so on and so forth that Twitter, they're not aware that they can be related to me because I don't follow, I don't do any the same thing or whatnot, but it's just uh, monitoring the entire progression of each and every one of them and see which one can get uh, a lot of ranking versus another one. And, and the more you're aligned with a certain narrative, the more you're able to get a lot more traction in a certain way as opposed to another. Um, so that's uh, basically for every single homo sapien who's listening to this, um, our freedom of speech is under attack. And that's again happening today, okay? And I have all the proofs for that. And at some point, somebody's gonna watch this and be like, oh, you know, I'm the regulator, whatever. I'm gonna see what he did to find out that about Twitter and about Facebook and so on and so forth. I'm not interested in negativity. I'm interested in building a future for towards positivity. So when I find negative things, I'm just concerned about like how we build a better system for the future. Um, so if anybody wants to do anything negative, please don't contact me. If anybody wants to do things positive, please contact me. Wonderful. That's exactly what we want. And thank you again for coming on our show today. This was amazing. Really appreciate your insights. Thanks, Michael. That's Thanks, fantastic, Neil. Tufi. I'll, I'll never look at a poll the same way again. We should all be <laughs> cautious. Thank you. Hey, if you like today's show, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment. If you've been enjoying the Changing the Story podcast series, please subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you.